How do you do, fellow kids? What? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 phrases kids today don't understand. She was like, I'm a pusher, Katie. I'm a pusher. <laughs> what does that even mean? For this list, we're looking at sayings people from older generations used all the time that millennials and younger folks may have no idea about. What's a phrase you've heard someone say that you never heard before? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, roll the window down. When was the last time you drove in a car with crank windows? Unless you're driving a beater from a few decades ago, you likely haven't seen these in years. Until 2008, crank windows were the standard means by which to get some fresh air into a car. Roll your window down, start there. <laughs> so you gotta hear the street, you gotta smell it, you know? You gotta taste that shit, feel it. Right. You'd wind the lever in one direction and the window would lower, and vice versa. This gave birth to the roll the window down term, which older generations can relate to. With power windows having become the norm, this old saying has some younger drivers scratching their heads. Look at this. Power windows, power seats. I'll bet you the thing costs six grand, huh? Uh, yes, and it has a roof, but it's hidden. Number nine, you have a collect call. At a time when pay phones were the norm, you'd often find yourself being asked to insert more money to extend the call time. We could be moving to Florida. Please insert to dollar twenty-five for an additional three minutes. Mom, where's your cell? Okay, don't laugh. I didn't lose my power cord. It ran away. <laughs> Yet in some cases, payphone or not, you would dial zero in front of the number and be asked to record your name. The line would then dial the outbound call, and when answered, the receiver would hear your name and could accept the charges for the call. Hello. You have a collect call from. Hey, buddy, don't say no! I accept. This gave way to countless creative ways to say your name to convey a message without ever paying for the actual conversation. Make a collect call, please. First name, Bob. Last name is Dr. Davis. We had a baby eat the boy. Dr. Hello. Can I call for Mr. Bob? We had a baby eat the boy. Sorry, wrong number. Although still available, collect calls have vastly diminished thanks to nationwide long distance plans available from most phone companies. Number eight, I'm watching reruns. As hard as it may be to fathom now, there was a time when you couldn't rewatch whatever show you wanted at any time. It's a great time to be alive, isn't it? Episodic television aired new episodes every week, and if you happen to miss one, you might just have to wait for a rerun. Networks would often rebroadcast previously aired episodes from the same season during parts of the year when nothing new was available. I've seen this one. This is a classic. This is uh, where Ralph dresses up as a man from space. What do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. Yeah, well, I saw it on a rerun. It's a rerun. Although the term is not as common anymore, the practice of reruns is still quite common. Outside of the streaming world, there are still entire TV networks dedicated to rerunning old episodes of shows people are fond of. Might miss Miami Vice. Nope, summer, reruns. I'm all set. <sighs> Number seven, eject the cassette. We suppose the same thing could be said for floppy disks at one time as well. In the era of rolling storage, cassettes, often just referred to as tapes, were used for playback and recording of music. Well, I could just record my part on tape, I guess, and Jermaine could play along. A tape? A cassette tape? No. They had a magnetic ribbon that spun between two spindles. This meant that for most cassette players, the tape was put into a slot and then pushed into the device. While playback was in progress, you couldn't pull out or even touch the tape itself. Congratulations on purchasing the Sanyo DL30, the finest non-reversing tape player! <gasps> you would have to press the stop button to discontinue the music, and then press eject for the tape to be released from the player. If you own a DVD or Blu-ray player, you've probably done this yourself. Number six. Get off the phone, I'm trying to download a song. Dial-up internet may still exist, but by and large, broadband has become the norm. But when digital music emerged during the Napster era, much of the world still connected to the internet over a traditional landline telephone. Downloading music for free is awesome! What the hell is that? I don't know, let me check the- Freeze FBI! Since you couldn't talk on the phone while connected to the internet, this led to all kinds of disruptions while being online. Picking up a phone receiver while downloading anything typically resulted in you being disconnected and your music download being interrupted. 
It was made worse by the fact that a typical song could sometimes take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to download. It also led to a barrage of requests to hang up the phone, Hello? Mom, get off the phone! whereby the offender put the receiver back in the cradle. Number five, would you like to be seated in smoking or non-smoking? When it comes to most bars, restaurants, and even airplanes today, the idea of smoking indoors seems antiquated. You can't smoke in here. All right. I'll smoke in the waiting room. Uh, you can't smoke in the waiting room either. Then I'll smoke in the hall. I'm sorry, you can't smoke anywhere in the building. Yes, we know it's still allowed in some places, but for most of North America, smoking has become something seen primarily outdoors. Yet it wasn't that long ago when you'd go out to eat and a server would ask you if you preferred a section where people smoked. Smoking or not smoking? Uh, smoking. <laughs> What's even more surprising is to remember that at one time, the ticket agents at an airline would ask you the same thing when booking a flight. Smoking or non-smoking? Smoking, please. There. Have a nice trip. We wonder why it took so long for restaurants to catch up to what the airlines did years ago. Number four, listen to the B-side. At a time when vinyl records were all the rage, both sides of the album were given a label, A and B. 45s, which usually had one song on each side, were popular with radio. Now you all just sit there and keep your mouths shut while I go listen to my Britney Spears records. The A side tended to favor the more popular music the record label wanted to promote from an artist, whereas the B side would contain instrumental or other songs the label was less interested in. What about the B side? All my only dreams on the B side. But we need it for the B side. The term B-side stuck in the industry and became synonymous more so with bonus or extra tracks that were not part of a typical album's release. There's a hidden bonus track? Oh, I hope it's a ballad. As the world has shifted to streaming services, the term has fallen out of use considerably. Number three, be kind, rewind. Do you remember going into a video store and being asked beta or VHS? If you do, you probably also recall being asked if you had rewound your movie when it was returned. 349, it says 149. Well, you didn't rewind it, there's a $2 charge for not rewinding. There's no signs here, this is an outrage. What George, you... don't give them any money for that. It'll cost you less to keep it another day, rewind it and bring it back tomorrow. Before DVD, Video cassettes were the main medium for movie rentals. Like their audio counterpart, they had a magnetic ribbon that spun from one spindle to another. This meant that when the movie was over, you'd have to rewind it to watch it again. Movie rental stores like Blockbuster Video would often have signs or ads reminding you to be kind rewind before bringing your tapes back to the store. This saying quickly died with DVD, but it did get a movie named after it. Oh, that's not in alphabetical order. I know that. It's the new order. Excuse me. Do you work here? Sure. I don't think so. Haven't you heard about the new West Coast video, more efficient, non-alphabetical order? Number two, what's your fax number? It's funny watching Back to the Future Part 2 and seeing how they thought faxing would become such a huge part of 2015. Read my no, fax! No, please, no, I cannot be fired. I'm fired. Ah. <laughs> Long before the internet gave us email, fax machines gave us the ability to make a facsimile, hence the term fax of something, and send it electronically. The average consumer rarely used fax machines, but it was very popular with businesses. Fax! A fax is coming through! Oh yeah, a fax! A oh, fax! It's a 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 fax. A fax! Instead of having to snail mail a document to someone, you could get their fax number and send it to them immediately over a conventional phone line. It's still in use today, but has been largely replaced by secure electronic delivery via the internet. How can I help you? Hey, how you doing? Uh, I was wondering if y'all had a fax machine. <laughs> fax machine? Oh, okay. Um, it's a good question. If you bear with me a second, I'll just check with a colleague. The average kid probably has no idea what a fax machine is. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, like a broken record. 
Have you ever heard someone repeat the same thing to you over and over again? It can get a bit annoying, and some folks might even tell you they sound like a broken record. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, Say what one more goddamn time. The term comes from the days of listening to music on a record player. As the album would spin, a small needle would bounce off the grooves of the vinyl and produce a sound amplified by the player. Scratches on the vinyl would often cause the needle to skip, and the same few seconds would repeat again and again. Hence the term broken record. Since most kids today wouldn't recognize a record, they wouldn't recognize a broken one either. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.